like I want to um, talk a little bit of, about one more paradox to sort of reinforce what we talked about it with the twin paradox. Because here, you know, it's all kind of artificial, complicated, maybe, and um, the, the point of confusion can get buried in all that. So I want to, I think this is really the simplest uh, picture where I can highlight the paradox and the origin of the paradox again. So um, some textbooks, probably not ours, or Jian Koli, uh, would cover this as the time dilation paradox. And uh, I want to be clear here, the paradox is not the time dilation effect. I think you know, from our experiment and our postulate of special relativity, we feel comfortable with the Lorentz transformation, and we'll we feel comfortable with this as the effect of the Lorentz transformation. So this is not the paradox. So let me describe the paradox. Imagine you have two clocks uh, that are identical, like this clock and let's say this clock. They are more or less identical. Um, you know, right now when they are in the same reference frame, they are ticking down the same amount of time. So imagine Alice and Bob. Um, let's say um, uh, this time Alice is staying with the lap frame clock and Bob is taking this clock and zooming by. As Bob zooms by, uh, Alice looks at Bob's clock and in the time it takes, uh, in the amount of time it takes for this clock to count down one second, does Alice's clock count more than one second or less than one second? So this clock, moving clock, takes one second to of time to count down, what does Alice's clock measure? More than or less than a second? More than? More than a second, right? That's the time dilation. Moving clocks are slow, so in the time it takes for this to count down one second, that clock counts down more than a second. So that, so far so good. There's no paradox there. The paradox results in when you try to shift to your reference frame. When you imagine you are Bob, you are taking the clock, you are moving by, in the time this clock takes one second to, to count down, uh, or in the time it takes this clock to count down one second, how many seconds have your clock count, <coughs> counted down? More than a second or less than a second? A lot of people say less, because you feel uncomfortable saying that, <laughs> Because you, you are implicitly answering this question, which of the two clocks are slower? And in the earlier description, we said that this clock is slower. So we want to, you want to stick with that. You want to say that as Bob is moving, in the time that this takes a second, in the amount of time it takes this to count down one second, you want to say this will count down um, less than a second so that this will keep being a slow clock. And I will tell you the correct answer is that from Bob's reference frame, that is the moving clock. So that moving clock is a slower, not this stationary clock. So that's the paradox. Time dilation is symmetric. When you have two clocks that are moving relative to each other, whatever clock in its own reference frame will measure the other clock as being slower. It's quite paradoxical when you think about it because it's like saying, you know, A is less than, it, it, you know, it, if, if I wrote down this, A is less than B and B is less than A, this would be logical contradiction. And that's what paradox is. And uh, what I will tell you is that this is the quote unquote paradox because this seeming contradiction it's only a result of your um, flawed intuition. So let me show you a better mathematically how this comparing of two clocks looks like. This is really difficult to explain in words. So this is where space-time diagram really helps. So let me do that. Um, let me draw the space-time diagram. So this is my lab frame. So this would be Alice's reference frame. And this time, I guess I need some kind of markers to indicate how much time is passing for Alice. So some one, two, three units, one, two, three, four units. I'm just making some unit marker. Um, and let me draw Bob's reference frame, which will be moving relative to this. So Bob is moving as some, um, uh, let me just exaggerate this a little bit. 
Um, so this is, uh, uh, the, this is the word line for light moving at speed of you know, light C. So Bob will be moving at something like this. So pretty fast, but not quite at the speed of light. So if this is T prime axis for Bob, that's how fast he's moving, then the X prime axis for Bob would look something like this. Close enough. And um, the spacing here will actually change. Um, that's an effect of this gamma factor here. So spacing as drawn in you know, this reference frame from the left frame, it will look like it's getting longer. So let me draw that. Uh, I don't know if I can draw that well. I'm just going to draw something. If they are a little bit off, um, forgive me. Um, so something like this. Um, so it will appear to be. Uh, more widely spaced because of that gamma factor. Something like that. Yep. So let me describe the time interval that represents how long, um, you know, amount of time it takes for a clock to count down three seconds. So from Alice's reference frame, so this would be the Alice's clock, starting here and ending here. So this is the this is three second for Alice. Right? At the end of this three second, Alice looks over at Bob's clock at the same time. I, oh sorry, Alice observes Bob's clock at the same time when her own clock says three seconds. So what that's represented by he is here, this point here. Good? Now, uh, the, remember the distinction about observing and seeing. It takes a little bit of time for Alice to actually see it. We are reconstructing it to see, you know, at the moment when Alice's own clock reached the three second, what was Bob's clock doing right now at that time? So, well, it's two and not quite three seconds. So yes, Bob's clock is slower. Now, let me give you, so, you know, all this is, uh, and I think this is where a lot of your intuition is based on. That's why more than half of you said that as Bob is moving, um, that Bob still sees his own clock to be slower than that, because this is the picture you are trying to enforce. Let me draw the correct, relativistically correct picture. So this is the interval that represents three seconds uh, from, for Bob's clock. So you know, starts at zero here, and reaches three seconds here. Um, so that's a, a three second for Bob. Now, what a lot of you are doing intuitively and incorrectly is you are looking at oh, three seconds. It's uh, longer than three seconds for Alice. So. Um, um, so you would say, oh, so Bob's clock is a slower, right? So that's the correct answer. And what Bob and Bob would look at you like a crazy person, because to Bob, what it would look like, yeah, but you are comparing three seconds for my clock at a time that's uh, significantly later for Alice, because these these two points are not what counts for Bob as right now. These two points are not simultaneous. So you have to first draw the line of simultaneity for Bob. That's the line that's going to be parallel to this line. So let me draw that line, because you have to figure out what, what, what is simultaneous for Bob. This moment in time for Bob is simultaneous. Uh, I have to draw this correctly, parallelly. Uh, so OK, so that's the parallel direction. All right. So this, this is the line of simultaneity for Bob. This is the line of simultaneity, by which I mean these are the set of points where t prime is equal to three seconds. So for Bob, at the moment when his clock hit three seconds, this is where Alice's clock was, less than three seconds. So Bob says, oh, Alice's clock is slower, which makes sense because that's the moving clock. So when Bob sees you comparing this space-time coordinate with this space-time coordinate, 
he's looking at you like a crazy person, because like, why are you comparing those two points that have no meaning to me? For Bob, the two special points that are simultaneous are this point with that point. Now, um, what this point represents is, this point represents when Alice would see Bob's clock strike three, oh, sorry, when Alice would observe <laughs> Bob's clock striking three seconds. That's what this point represents. But once again, that has no meaning for Bob, because they are, these two are not simultaneous for Bob, only for Alice. Yeah. So um, there's many more um, special relativity paradoxes that your textbook would go through, and maybe I will write up a note. But um, that's, I think, all we have class time for. And I will just leave you with this. Um, this space-time diagram is the best to, tool there is to explore any special relativity paradoxes. Because um, there's a lot of implicit assumptions you make when you're trying to reason them out in words. Space-time diagram, kind of like when you draw a free body diagram in analyzing forces, it, um, it, it makes clear a lot of the assumptions you may be making. Like once you draw this, it's clear from Bob's reference frame that these two points are simultaneous and these two points are not. It's, and it's a lot clearer than it would be in English. <laughs> so, so this is the best tool that's available to you. And most of the so-called paradoxes, it'll trace down to you are assuming some kind of absolute simultaneity that simply doesn't exist. That's the biggest uh, intuitive thing that you have to get rid of in special relativity that's hard for a lot of people. I mean, you know, with enough practice, you can do it, but it's hard for a lot of people to get rid of that sense of intuition, that simultaneity is relative.